1969, the 17-year-old Richards was already a star attraction on his home island of Antigua. In 1972, Richards was playing first-class cricket for the Leeward Islands. He had a big influence on the smaller islands of the West Indies, who were outside the mainstream up until 1966. Viv started his, test, his first class career in 1972, so it was only six years after the Windward, so uh, um, St. Lucia, St. Saint, um, Saint Vincent, Dominica, Grenada, and his own home island, Antigua, St. Kitts, the small islands, were brought in. And all of a sudden, they had this star. So that made the small islands lift everyone there, uh, gave them a tremendous boost of confidence. In 1973, he was playing county cricket for Somerset alongside Ian Botham. The Somerset meant everything to him. That was his first big chance, as it was with me. Uh, so he, it meant a great deal to him. And we, we learned a lot. We learned about life together. We learned to, uh, well, we didn't learn about much about cooking, but you know, we learned about most things together. And um, I was privileged and lucky enough to grow, and the two of us grew together. But to grow up, it was, it was absolutely magnificent to watch his career going. And I would take as much interest in what he was doing as he would in what I was doing. First time I played against Viv Richards, he was playing for, I think, the President's Eleven at Montego Bay. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we didn't know who this guy was apart from the name Richards on the, on the scoreboard. Jeff Hammond was bowling, no slouch, lively, could swing the ball out. And suddenly, bang, bang, bang. Three balls in a row, straight back over his head for four, very early in his innings. And then he's nicked one and caught behind, I think, something like that, from a good outswing. We've all gathered around and we're congratulating uh, Bomber, as we used to call him, Bomber Hammond, um, on a good piece of bowling. And Bomber just shook his head. He said, oh, you, you, you can't keep batting like that and getting away with it. And what we were to find out in later years was that uh, Viv could keep batting like that and, and getting away with it. Three future great West Indian players made their test taboos in 1974. Andy Roberts, Gordon Greenwich and Viv Richards. He did come along at a time when the West Indies were all powerful. Um, the 1974-75 tour of India was his first, was Gordon Greenwich's first, first for Clive Lloyd as captain. And uh, they all gelled together, of course, and felt confident. They were all confident. They felt they could do anything. And uh, I think Viv's whole attitude rubbed off on the rest of the team. In his first test match against India, Richard struggled with the fast leg spin of Bhagwat Chandrasekhar. He made amends in the second, scoring 192 not out. In the inaugural World Cup final at Lords in 1975, Viv Richards failed with the bat, but he still had a profound effect on the game. Oh, and this must be a run out here. He must be out. In an era when fielding standards reached new heights, Richards was supreme. In that 1975 World Cup final, Australia v uh, uh, West Indies, he turned the match with his brilliant fielding. I mean, I think it was only his first, I think it could have been only his second match for the West Indies. And his fielding in the mid-wicket areas and the cover point areas was was uh, outstanding and he, he ran three of the Australian batsmen out when they were really set and they were going and I think if he hadn't run them out I think Australia would have won it. It's just the speed with which he moved in comparison with what we had in those days. I mean, I guess now with modern one-day cricket, he probably wouldn't have been that remarkable. But it was just, you know, the man for the occasion. Here it was, it was the final. West Indies got the better of it, and probably one of the key things was, was these three key runouts. The 1975-76 tour of Australia began badly for Richards. He failed to reach 50 in any of the first four tests. His place in the team was in jeopardy. Opening the batting for the last two tests and facing Lilly and Thompson, Richards made 30, 101, 50 and 98. His ability to take on new ball bowlers was recognized and his place assured. When uh, Viv Richards hit the ball, there was a different sound to it, had a different energy. 
he was just something special. He's the godfather of one day cricket. He's the one that invented the going down the pitch and the backing way, hitting over extra and doing all this weird and wonderful stuff. You know, he did stuff that great players dreamt of. God, I wish he played for Australia. Oh, over those years. But Sir Vivian Richards, they don't make him any better. Viv Richards, all I'm grateful for is that I didn't have to bowl to him. The contempt he, he sort of gave to, to bowlers, you know, like everybody's walking out with helmets on and armour over the arm and rib cage protection. Viv used to walk out and you knew full well that you could see the brown skin through the shirt. You could see the cap at a rakish angle on the head and say, well, come on, you serve it up to me, mate. I'm ready for you. Short ball straight away and Richards confidently smashes it to the boundary. Oh, is he looking dangerous?